in Burnaby to help children, families, and seniors. <clears throat> and whereas the city of Burnaby and United Way together strive to build a city where with that, we move on to reports. So a motion to resolve into a committee of the whole. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. And uh, Community Heritage Commission, Councillor Jordan, you have a series of reports. Thank you, Worship. I was just thinking, Councillor Johnson, I should trade back and forth because I've got three. Oh, and he's got four. Anyway, um, sorry about that, but that's just how it comes out sometimes. So. The first report is from the Commission is Remembering Working People, Plaques Around the Project, uh, Plaques Around the Province Project. And the recommendation is that Council approve the installation of two commemorative plaques for the BC Labour Heritage Centre's Plaques Around the Province Project as outlined in. They are cast uh, in metal and they are very attractive, uh, significant mark markers. And so this is, and the text of those is going is included in what you see tonight. Uh, the two plaques that we will have in Burnaby are in recognition of the Barnett Lumber Company Mill Workers Strike, which uh, happened at the turn of the century and also a plaque commemorating the Japanese workmen railway disaster. And this was an event where uh, more than 20 uh, workers were killed on a train in the uh, Lost Creek area along the, the Burnett, uh, Burnett River. Oh,
uh, Company Mill one will be in Burnett Marine Park and the other one will be along uh, the trail that goes along by the Burnett uh, River in that same area as the accident actually occurred. And the council will, when it all gets together to have them actually installed and unveiled, there'll be um, more information coming forward for council to attend. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor uh, Jordan. Questions have been called. All those in favour, opposed, and carried. 4B, please. And this is the Kapoor Singh Sidhu Stop of Interest sign. And the recommendation is that Council authorize staff to facilitate the installation of the proposed Provincial Stop of Interest sign for Kapoor Singh Sidhu at Marie Burnett Marine Park as outlined in Section 3 of this report, and the copy be sent to Parks, Rec, and Culture Commission. And I so move. Again, Your Worship, the province of British Columbia um, issued a call in the spring for uh, installation of new uh, stop of interest signs around the province. And, and I think everyone remembers seeing these at road pullouts along every highway around, around the province, but as part of the um, history celebrations and perhaps Canada 150, they decided to, to put out some um, new ones this year. And so we applied again for the city and suggested uh, some significant events and places in our city that might be recognized. And because this one, these ones were particularly to uh, recognize um, different ethnic groups within the province, this one was selected for Burnaby. And it's to recognize Mr. Sidhu, who was uh, one of the early lumber industrialists in our province. And so this particular plaque, as you can see, is designed uh, in the format uh, tradition of the province of British Columbia. And so this one is their sign, but we'll be again installing this uh, near the sign of the original uh, mill, and it will be in our Burnett Marine Park. And the maps and everything about where it will be located are included in the package, and again, when it's actually um, erected and unveiled, Council will be invited to participate at that time. And in this case, the province has to look after and maintain the sign into the future, so it's no cost to the city. Thank you. Councillor Calandino. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I think these are great events that are being planned by the Heritage Commission and the province, and it's wonderful to have signposts around to commemorate the history of the uh, our city and the rest of the province. But I'm just wondering in, 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 in this specific one whether uh, the family of the Sidhu has been uh, informed of this because they do still live in North Burnaby and one of the members you probably all know, Kerry Sidhu, yes. who I think is the grandson of uh, uh, oh. Mr. Kapoor Singh Sidhu or great grandson, I'm not sure which, uh, but I know that he. Uh, told me that his family started the lumber business on Burnett Highway, so it would be wonderful to have uh, the family there present at, the, at that time. Oh, absolutely. Um, even before we made the application on their behalf, staff was in touch with the, with the family of Mr. Sidhu, and they were very supportive of this going forward and everything to do with it, so they're quite thrilled that it was selected, and, and they have been in touch with them, for sure. Thank you. Councillor Daliwal. Thank you, Your Worship. I, uh, I just uh, also wanted to say a couple of words uh, about Mr. Kapoor Singh Sidhu. He was uh, uh, prominently, uh, I guess, featured in, in our Burnaby history book that we published a few years ago. This was all about one chapter was dedicated to Mr. Sidhu, um, who, who at the turn of the century, last century, uh, somewhere in between, I guess, uh, after in the first quarter or so when things weren't going well, managed to restart a previously stopped and, or abandoned mill and start up some work again and, and employ a fair amount of people uh, from not, not just only the South Asian community but also people in the area. Well-respected. Um, I guess it, 
One thing worth noting, Your Worship, is the South Asian community in the early 20th century when they got here, they felt they were very much part of the same family because obviously coming from India, which was also a, a direct colony in a way of British and same with Canada, they all felt they were a British subject and they felt very close about it and, 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 and perfectly at home in terms of saying, yeah, we are among our family, this isn't anything different than where they came from. And, and participated wholeheartedly, not only just working, built and building the, the building the, the, the province, but also taking on entrepreneurial risks, particularly in the lumber industry, because obviously in, in throughout the province, they were well uh, recognized for the hard work and, and also participation in, in laborious, uh, labor type of work. And the Mr. Sidhu was among some of them who eventually ended up Run, actually taking on the, the mills and, and, and working with Doman Industry on the island, also St. John and Vancouver, Fraser Mills, etc. They were prominent in that. So it's good to see they're being recognized for the work along with, with the Chinese uh, and Canadian um, citizens who also worked very hard in terms of building this province. Your Worship, I think it's very appropriate if we I'm, I'm certain many of us have seen the remnants of that mill on, on Barnett um, Marine Drive. When you go there, something, I'm not certain whether it's exactly the same site, but, but there's a plaque about the mill that existed. I imagine that was one of them. So good to see that being recognized. Uh, I think that the, the Kerry Sidhu that, uh, that the Council Corrigan mentioned is, is on the, it, uh, I guess uh, Hastings uh, Merchant Association is serving there and a prominent family in there who are also continuing some businesses in, in North Burnley. Good to see that, sir. I was interested in whether or not you would catch it on the, uh, the mock-up of the proposed stop of interest sign on page 18 for Mr. Sadu. But it says that uh, he was one of BC's earliest lumber industrialists and his operas, operations employed hundreds, including those at Kapoor Sawmills located here. Known for his education, prosperity and charity, he used his success to advocate for civil liberties for the Southeast Asian community. Yeah. And uh, a legacy still celebrated today. Now I'm no expert in this stuff, but uh, I think it's South Asian South Asia. community, not yeah. Southeast Asian community. That would be the Thais and Vietnamese. And so when we're it's doing this. The province. <laughs> it's the province of British Columbia, I admit. And yeah. if they say South Asia, East Asian, they're probably right. But just in yeah. this one so instance, the province might be incorrect. And uh, you, you never know. We might. So anyway, I thought I would point that out that uh, I think it's probably going to receive better, be received better if it's South Asian community rather than Southeast Asian community. Thank you, Your Worship. I, I must say I read the, uh, the, the plaque when the, in our meeting I, that I just scanned over because you just assume what the word is without reading it. <laughs> and, and yes, I, I would suggest to you, according to that book by, I guess, by Harry, um, who wrote that it's clearly South Asians, they were basically Punjabis, like, like that he knew that he served them. But he did say that a large other community, but, but not, not South Asian, but it would be South Asian. But South, South Asian would be good, uh, more correct than Southeast East Asians. I, um, yeah, I guess it's the lawyer in me that I read everything trying to find yeah. whether or not, in fact, it's <laughs> correct. But uh, in this case, the reason, I mean, if it's a typo in a report, I don't usually complain. But when they're going to put it on a plaque yeah, and it's yeah. going to be there forever, you want to be sure that we remind them to get the designated ethnic community correct so that we, uh, we are going to be making the necessary change on that. I hope they haven't uh, sent that to the provincial <laughs> foundry yet. I think they wouldn't, but <laughs> you might have to get out of Sandra. <laughs> Mr. All Patrick, right. could you t speak to Mr. Wolf in the morning about that? Thank you. With that, um, is there any further Question. discussion? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Uh -huh.
month, the, uh, last but not least from the Commission, is the Burnaby Then and Now, celebrating Burnaby's 125th anniversary with heritage markers. And the recommendation is that Council approve the final design and location for a series of plaques produced under the Burnaby 125 Heritage Marker Project, as outlined in this report. And I would so move. So, um, Your Worship, as you were coming in today, and Council, you saw in the uh, foyer the uh, first production of the 12 plaques under our Heritage Marker uh, Program. And this was a result of earlier in the year when Council approved the expenditure of $60,000 from the City's Gaming Fund to implement um, an ongoing heritage project, something that would, you know, mark this special anniversary year, but also celebrate our history in, in some kind of uh, new and unique way. And as well, um, the Commission applied for a British Columbia Canada 150 Celebrating Heritage uh, grant, and we received an additional $57,000 for that, which allowed the staff and uh, folks to considerably expand the scope of what was originally planned for this project. So over the last few months, uh, our staff have developed a series of themes that they wanted to uh, bring forward through this particular program and they wanted to uh, highlight some aspects of Burnaby's history that might not previously have have been given the recognition or attention uh, that others would have. And so what you see this evening is the result of that work. There are 12, uh, they call them plaques, but they're not really plaques. <laughs> it's got to be a better name. Heritage markers, we'll call them, that will eventually be distributed around the city and the location for the plaques, again, is listed um, in the report today. So they're kind of distributed in locales around the city where the particular event, individual, or um, topic it, is featured and highlighted. Um, we have the first one being Burnaby's response to the Great Depression, and that will be located in, in the, the precinct of the Tommy Douglas Library, which is our neighborhood of our old city hall. Again, the workforce at Barnett Mill, uh, at Barnett, Barnett Marine Park. Uh, you've, we've already spoken tonight about uh, Mr. Sidhu's plaque. We have recognition of Eileen Daly that will be uh, posted at Confederation Park. Uh, recognition of Chinese farmers in the Big Bend area, and that is from the very earliest of days. That one, uh, the committee suggested, so more of the public could see it, would be placed at, uh, in the precinct of Riverway Golf Course. Kingsway, in the post-war era, some place in the Station Square uh, area. Uh, a tribute to Alan Emmett and post-war Burnaby, that will be at the Island Emmett Center. Uh, another one for about the saving of Burnaby Lake and the creation of the Burnaby Lake Regional Park at Burnaby Lake. The preserving of the Brunette River in this, along the Central Valley Greenway near Gallardy Way. Um, a very interesting plaque talking about the Willingdon Heights, so the, the first subdivision that uh, that went in and the changing of Burnaby into a, a suburban community. Uh, also, the Dominion Bridge Studios plaque, which will be located at Jim Lorimer and show the conversion of what once was a heavy industrial site, making bridges to what is now a film studio. So talking about the in industrial history of our city. And last but not least, uh, another plaque honoring Ernie Winch um, and New Vista, which will be in uh, Chafferkey Park on Holly Street. So this this little project that we started off a few months ago has really um, turned into something very special, and I'm very, very proud of, of our staff and 
what what they have come up with when we kind of just gave them carte blanche to say something that will be a lasting memory from this 125th anniversary and something that would take the history of Burnaby out into the community and said, okay, go for it. And I guess the staff uh, put together a working group, developed a lot of ideas like this, and then went out and also in, engaged the community. And you will all know uh, Lisa Card from, from the museum. I asked her to give me an actual little bit of a supplementary report on, on everything that's come out of this uh, project and a relatively s small investment, I would say, from the beginning. And so she sent me an additional email. She said that, that we have had over 125 uh, community members involved in this project. So as well as four researchers who have been able to be funded from the project, uh, one of our own auxiliary staff, Eric Damer, and three students, Denise Fong, William Archibald, and Rebecca Salas, uh, from UBC, UVic, and SFU, respectively. They were all uh, history students who worked as a summer project on this, and so gathering the background information, going through our archives, finding relevant materials and reports, coordinating with the community and everything to develop these, these uh, snippets of, of our history. The little group of researchers was also a, assisted by uh, Dr. Alan Seeger, everybody here I think around the table knows Alan, and he has recently retired from SFU History Department, and so he's kind of uh, been the senior leader with the research folks, and he did a particular amount of work on uh, William Pritchard, who's the highlight of one of, our, of, one of the, the plaques outside, talking about the Depression era of Burnaby. So it's nice to see former Reeve Richard will be recognized and honored. So also through the work on the project, the uh, team identified the need for some assistance of an advisory committee in helping guide the research, especially with respect to the early Chinese Canadians who lived in, in Burnaby and then obviously in the, the farming area and in the south. And so they developed a separate advisory committee of uh, people from the uh, Canadian Alumni Network for Pacific Canada Heritage, um, various folks from South Burnaby also to guide, to guide them and collect additional materials that we didn't necessarily have here in the, here in the city of Burnaby to um, talk more about that particular part of the project. And again, there was other, um, you know, citizens that came forward and said, gee, we'd like to get involved in this too, and and it's now expanded, and there's actually been um, audio uh, interviews done with some some people that came forward that had expertise in certain areas, and and even some, uh, some possibly some videos that will be, become part of the record as they, they finish off this project. So, it's really expanded and it's brought together a whole new sort of cadre of interest in, in that, and as I said, aspects of Burnaby's heritage that, uh, that people really hadn't focused on previously. So it's, it's, I was very excited about it. The members of the commission were really excited the other night when we first had a, had a look at the pictures and then realized that there's um, going to be more able to come out of this because of the extra funding that we receive from the grant that will, again, all be eventually installed around the city, but also have a place within our archives and the museum. And, and so it's you know, turned into quite a nice thing, and I hope uh, people will appreciate it when they, when they see these pieces out in the community. And they're interesting because there's photographic uh, information as well as you know, some history of, of our city with so many new residents is that we better take the history to them and show them what Burnaby used to be used to be like in different times, not just from the era of the museum, right? So it's been really fun. I um, I'm going to be interested in how they play the uh, the former Reeve Pritchard and the Depression because 
I think my Burnaby history is right in that uh, it was Pritchard who um, put us into bankruptcy yep. and we ended up in trusteeship for the next uh, 12 years as a result of it. So I'll, uh, I'll be interested in how that one comes out in a plaque. It's straight out there. Have a look. <laughs> That's because he, he kept... Um, he kept paying the people that he was hired to work through the depression with it, and unfortunately the, the government, did, the feds didn't come through with the money that they'd promised to make, so, and he kept paying them, so we ran out of money. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it is interesting because that was one of the formulative times in Burnaby history when we were put into trusteeship and had a provincial government trustee looking after the city, and uh, it took some time for us to ever get back to the position where we had control of our own destiny. And as a result, the reserve system started uh, in which we began to save for the things we wanted to buy so that we would never go into bankruptcy again. Um, so the, the people who took over at that point said, we've got to look after ourselves in a different way for the future. And it was really probably the seminal stages for us uh, having the reserves we have today is that there's been that attitude of constantly looking after the, the future and never jeopardizing uh, again our ability to control our own destiny. So it, it, is, uh, it is interesting that from out of that history comes a lot of different things that were done later on as a result. It's interesting that um, Reeve Pritchard um, has a, a very colorful history even before he became the Reeve of Burnaby, which may not, he's one of the few previous mayors slash Reeves who doesn't have a park slash building or anything named after him in the city. He, did, um, he was given uh, recognition not shortly before he, he passed away in, in some form by the city, but but maybe that's why he doesn't have anything named after him. <laughs> Curious, eh? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think the bankruptcy likely was held against him for a little while. But I'm glad to see he's been rehabilitated uh, in, a, in a new plaque. So, uh, Councillor Daliwa. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm, I'm very privileged to be a member of the Commission. Uh, when you get these... Um, reports from the staff, how the history is being uh, now going to be put on display for everyone to see um, how we are preserving all the, the past in terms of both records as well as, uh, as well as exhibitions basically taken to the public rather than coming to one place. It will be available to see for both the residents and people who come to Burnaby. What's interesting, Your Worship, is for someone like myself who who wasn't born here, have a perspective of, of different nations. Like where I come from, civilization has been there for thousands of years. When we read the history, we were talking about before BC, uh, we were talking about a thousand years before this history generally. So, so there's a lot. And what, what that does is most of it has been there, but nothing much is changing as rapidly. But when you compare this, over the last 150 years, Your Worship, you can see uh, the change that has occurred at such a great speed. Like even you know, someone like myself who come to Burnley 50 years ago, I can see a big change to see what was then versus now. And you stretch that back another 75 years, it's a totally different, different world altogether. It seems like this wasn't like anywhere of Burnley, what you see but these were the people, Your Worship, who struggled and who toiled and who really uh, persevered in terms of even harsh climate, whatnot, to settle this place. And, and when you see through the, through the lenses of historians and see, it's very, uh, for me, it's very uh, riveting and engaging. And I was very happy to see that the, I'm certain that these are not only the 12 things we can talk well, about, they're probably fine. just as many more dozens of those things to talk about. And I'm certain when people will see, oh, I remember more than this, that's what would happen. But this is a great start, Your Worship, and I think the, the kiosks that will be built uh, around these to, to preserve these uh, markers 
would display different parts of the history. It's not only a pride for all of us, but it's also for those who are coming who are new to this to recognize that, look, this was a place then and what has changed in the last 150 years. I recognize indigenous um, Canadians were here long before that, but the change that has occurred is mesmerizing to me what has happened over the last 150 years, Your Worship from nothing basically between New Westminster to Vancouver. Well, Vancouver wasn't there much either. We have now about 250,000 people living just in our city and the change that has occurred. So that's what's exciting about this, Your Worship. Thank you, and uh, Councillor Balko. Uh, just very quickly, I wasn't going to speak on this, but I, when B.R. Pritchard's name came up, I think it's also important that uh, I don't think many, many people recognize this about former Reeve Pritchard was, as a young man, he was charged with sedition for his role in the 1919 Winnipeg General Strike, a seminal moment in uh, Canadian uh, labor history. So he's an interesting character in all kinds of ways, and I don't know if... Uh, if any mention will be made of that in any of his plaques, or but anyways, uh, I just uh, I just think yeah, fascinating character, and uh, maybe this might spur people on to investigate a little more about some of the uh, some of the people that are and some of the events that will be mentioned on some of these uh, plaques. Well, there's a fascinating history in Burnaby, and uh, and I think uh, a lot of people when they get a when they begin to get some knowledge about it start to start to look into the history of this area and uh, and you know who the modern day politician uh, we have who's related to uh, former Reeve Pritchard his grandson yeah yeah that's Bob Williams Bob the Williams former grandson. cabinet minister in the NDP government is uh, is the progeny of uh, Mr. Pritchard so it is really really fascinating as you see all of these connections and what we want to do is inspire people as a result of this to look into Burnaby's history and to realize that uh, this is uh, a city that's been shaped over many, many years by many people who had uh, very colorful backgrounds and contributed to uh, an interesting historical development in this city and, and some of them quite contemporary as we go on into, for instance, the plaque related to uh, Reeve Allen Emmett, who uh, had a long a long history with Burnaby, so I think I think it's very fascinating. Councillor uh, McDonnell. Thank you, Your Worship. I uh, just wanted to comment on the Ernie Winch and the New Vista. Ernie Winch was the founding member of the CCF and uh, got elected as an MLA in this province and was there for many years. And uh, he founded uh, New Vista. And to show you the foresight that this man had back in the early in mid 40s was when he structured it he structured a society which is the new vista society and then he structured a board of trustees and the board of trustees is made up of five there's one appointed by the city which i represent there's one from the host lions club because they were there right from the beginning to help and um, and the third one comes from the board of uh, society board appointment and then those three we appoint two from the community. And when I explain it to people, budgets, any contracts, anything like that, goes through the board, they approve everything, but then it has to come to the trustees for approval because we have final say. So I explained it to people. I says, if you think of the federal government, it's like the House of Commons and the Senate, except ours works. <laughs> and the idea that he did this for was so nobody could come in and buy up a bunch of memberships in society and take it over and then liquidate assets. And today, when we look at the assets, we have 545 rental units. We have a care home. We're just building a new one. We're expanding into more uh, low-income family homes and stuff like this. So there's a lot of assets there. And he had the foresight to put in a safeguard that it just somebody couldn't walk in, take that over, and then just liquidate everything. So, I mean, that's going back 70 years ago and over 70 years had that foresight. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Jordan, and uh, it is great work the Community Heritage Commission is doing. I, I know the people on there are really enjoying being involved in that particular committee of council because it is, at every meeting, a learning experience. We got lessons from the members of the committee at every meeting, and last 
meeting with Councilor Dolly was <laughs> turned to give a lesson, <laughs> and it was very, very interesting coming from spelling, <laughs> a spelling lesson, right? Um, just to say that I, I forgot to mention that that actually because again because we got the grant money, they were actually going to be uh, producing a series of short video vignettes. Uh, based on five of the plaques, and they have already uh, retained Glue Studios of Burnaby to do this. So, so there be, um, in case you're never in the neighborhood where one of the plaques are, you'll be able to go on Heritage website and and uh, you know see the video version. And there is actually a, a live interview. I don't know, Councillor Balco, if you've listened to it, but there is a an interview with Miss with Mr. Pitchard that's in on our Heritage website in the oral history. Of the um, collections. There you go. Another reason to go to our heritage website. Yeah. All right. Question. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Moving Sorry on to the so Financial long. Management <laughs> Committee. Your Worship, now for the really interesting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> on, on that note, I will uh, move on behalf of the committee the Council approve a contract award to Hewlett Packard Enterprise Canada Corporation for an estimated value of 1.6. Five seven six hundred, including GST and PST, in the amount of one hundred and seventy-seven thousand six hundred, as outlined in the report. Second, Your Worship, um, the uh, city is about to embark on a on a uh, roughly ten-year upgrade on our accounting software. The uh, there's two reports this evening. This first one is actual purchase of the upgrade software. The hardware, sorry, this is for the hardware of the towards that. Upgrade. Right. Ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, carried. And next one, Your Worship, is the software. And this is uh, the Council approve a contract award to Korea Tech Group for an estimated $1.072,523 million, including GST in the amount of 51073 as outlined in the report. Question. Second, please. You ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, carried. And, uh, this is exciting, Your Worship. Uh, re contract uh, award regarding uh, telephony systems, hardware, and software. And I move that Council approve a contract award to Longview Systems Corporation for an estimated value of $1.668,915, including GST and PST, and the amount of 160594 is outlined in the report. The Your Worship. Second. Second. This is a uh, this is a uh, an award for upgrading of our telephone system. I believe it's it's either 10 or 15 years since uh, the last system was done. Um, technology has changed quite a bit, and or um, staff are finding when a, a unit breaks down, they have to go to eBay to buy replacement parts, which is getting kind of uh, redundant. Um, the report that's before us is um, for. Uh, People are uh, familiar with Cisco systems, uh, telephone system, this on the hardware side, and the related uh, voice over internet protocol software that would that would operate them. In our old system, to show you what we're replacing was Nortel, <laughs> so yes. SOA is back. Um, maybe someone in staff can tell me why we call it a telephony system. I would have thought. Telephone system would have worked okay, but this is the only place we seem to get telephony Telephone. systems. Ms. Kassam, do you know why that is? It's just the the talk of of the technology today. It's telephony is is how they pronounce it. Oh, telephony. It. Oh, so we're saying it with the accent on the wrong syllable. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you were telephony. This oh. isn't the only thing that's, that's using that. The that's a lot more dramatic. A telephony system makes it sound like it's not telephones yeah that sort of justifies how much we're paying for them yeah. right sad but true with another million okay okay so you ready for the question on the telephony phones as long as we're not getting a phony phone yeah. <laughs> all those in favor opposed and carried and last, Your Worship, regarding 2018 permissive property tax exemptions, I would move that Council authorize City Solicitor to bring down a permissive property tax bylaw to exempt the properties listed in Attachment 4 from property taxes in 2018. 
Second the motion. Your Worship, this is a long list of social service organizations, churches, um, some sports related uh, facilities that provide services to the community uh, that complement or, or uh, substitute for services that the city doesn't offer um, in the social service side and, and such. As such, uh, the organizations such as the churches and sports groups that offer these services are, are eligible under the Local Government Act for partial or uh, full um, property tax uh, exemption on the footprint of their buildings. So the list before us is the list that would go forward for next year's tax calculations. All right. And with that, all, of, all in favor, opposed, and carry. Already passed. Okay. Um, moving on to the city manager's report. Um, item 5.1 is the building permit tabulation report for August 1st to August 31st, 2017. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, opposed, and carried. Item 5.2. And this is uh, authorization to forward this project to a public hearing on October 17th, 2017, and this is a CD development RM5S in the Brentwood Town Center development plan. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, opposed, and carried. Motion that the committee rise and report. All those in favor, opposed, carried. A motion that the report of the committee be adopted. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Bylaws, Councillor McDonnell. Thank you, Worship. For third reading, reconsideration, and final adoption, I move the bylaw 13708. We now read a third time, reconsidered, finally adopted, signed by the mayor and the clerk and the corporate seal affixed thereto. Second motion. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, opposed, and carried. Is there any new business? Councillor Jordan. Your Worship, I just wanted to remind everyone that's watching on their computers, because <laughs> they're not watching on television, <laughs> um, this weekend all over the city there's going to be tons of different events celebrating our 125th anniversary, starting at 125 on Friday at Confed Park. So go on the various websites and um, see what kind of activities. I think there's going to be cake and cupcakes just about everywhere, but you have to find out which, like which day, which time, which place. <laughs> and so there'll be lots of, lots of very cool events happening all around the city. We've had Edmonds. Edmonds at 5 o'clock on Friday. Cameron. Bonser, yep, they were saying Bonser, yep, near the all the rec centers will have some celebrations. And then on Sunday is River's Day at the Village. So, and I think you can get into our facilities for $1.25. All kinds of bargains. All kinds of bargains out there to have. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a good time to explore Burnaby on this weekend. Yeah. Councillor Belko. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. I can't leave this issue alone, but I don't think I'm the only councillor that's uh, run into this. But since the discontinuation of Cable 4 and Shaw not televising uh, council, I was actually quite amazed that over the last week how many people that I have no idea who they are have come up, they recognize me, and are <laughs> not happy that they can't turn on their Channel 4 on Monday and see what's going on at council. So. Just to let folks know, uh, sorry, but uh, that's it's not up to us to uh, as to why uh, Shaw is not televising it. But uh, if you wish, you can send off a letter to your MP and uh, send off a letter to Shaw. But a lot of people are not happy, Your Worship. Well, you'll know that uh, I sent a letter to the CRTC objecting strenuously. I've I'm probably one of the only mayors in the region who consistently has been appearing in front of the CRTC demanding that the cable companies hold up to their bargain on initially getting the right to utilize what are 
national facilities and uh, the CRTC has gradually allowed them to get out of those responsibilities on an incremental basis over over the past decades. Um, there are very few voices that are raised. In fact, uh, Burnaby is often alone in complaining about these issues because it's people saying, who's going to fight Ottawa? Who can stop the CRTC from doing what they will? And the fact is that they are lobbied by all of these big companies on a regular basis to provide them with those kind of benefits. And uh, and now the money that was going into local cable TV is going is being paid directly over to commercial television on the promise that they'll do more local coverage. And I, I think that's fundamentally wrong. I've said it over and over again, but nobody's listening. And it hasn't, other media has certainly not grabbed onto this as a, a major issue to be concerned about which is ironic given that uh, the media in so many ways is complaining about their inability to get public attention uh, and then they don't cover when there's a loss of major media outlets that gave young journalists an opportunity to become part of the system, to learn their skills, to be able to take risks. In fact, that's gone now and uh, it's all about commercialization. It's disappointing, and uh, there's a lot of people making a lot of money, but no longer is that money going back into the communities that they're supposed to serve. And gradually, there's no one left to listen. So it it works out that way as you as you get to the point where um, the media has not defended its right to exist. And, uh, and you end up in a situation in which you are losing opportunities for the public to know. And uh, it can be advantageous for politicians to not have people looking at their meetings and scrutinizing what they're doing. Um, but I still value highly the ability to watch our federal parliament, to be able to watch our provincial legislature on television, to all citizens to have a right to be able to get a, a look at what they're provincial and federal governments are doing, and I don't know why local government would not be given the same level of respect. Anyway, um, Councillor Johnson. On this uh, one, Your Worship, I'm curious to you to staff. It, it doesn't replace the la la loss of Cable 4. I do know that we broadcast on the website, but do we also um, provide live Facebook and Twitter? Your Worship, through you. No, we don't do live Facebook or Twitter. We stream live on the website, okay. and it's video archived and available first thing in the morning, the day following the council meeting. Okay, I understand that a couple of our neighboring municipalities are putting it just like tweeting a link, and then they click on the link, and it takes you right to the broadcast. Definitely looking to do that. Yeah. I personally like to stay away from tweeting. It seems to be hurting someone else. <laughs> I'm not suggesting it's a it's a replacement for radio. I believe me. I mean. All TV. right. Um, is there anything else? All right. A motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Thank you very much to everyone who was with us tonight. Thank you to staff and council. There we go. Five eight.